Okay, so for today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, paging. But before that, let's have a short review of the different techniques that we've known so far on how to manage the main memory. Uh, we said that the basic idea is uh, when a process is loaded into memory, it, ha it is uh, divided into logical sections like the code section, the data section, the heap, the stack. Okay. So all of these sections, logical sections, are uh, loaded into the memory. And uh, one of the main limitations or one of the issues that we need to consider when managing the main memory uh, in the, for, the, for the operating system is that we should be able to effectively utilize or efficient, efficiently utilize the main memory. Uh, what we mean by that is that we should be able to load several programs into the main, me main memory in order for the CPU to be able to execute multiple programs in the case of multiprogramming. And in order to do that, uh, it will require hardware and operating system support. And uh, in order to further uh, improve the utilization of memory, uh, address translation is introduced. What we mean by address translation is that a process when it is running it sees the memory as uh, it owns, it's as if it's of, it owns the entire memory area or the entire memory and that's called the virtual address space. And the actual uh, physical memory is another part. So address translation means that, okay, I have a process, I view memory like I own everything in it, every space in it. But the operating system manages the translation from virtual memory to uh, physical memory. So that's other translation. Now, in order to be able to accommodate uh, multiple programs to be in the main memory, we should have what you call uh, dynamic relocation. Dynamic relocation would mean you can move around uh, one uh, process, uh, move around in the memory, so that uh, you will be able to adjust the placement of memory for processes. And one approach to do that is via a base and limit register. Uh, what, uh, and the base and limit register does not only provide a mechanism to move around processes, it also provides security, wherein one process can only uh, access the memory specified within the uh, bounds starting from the address specified in the base register. So what we mean by that is a process, okay, we have different logical sections, we have uh, code, sec uh, code, stack, etc. They are all located in one contiguous block of memory starting with the uh, address specified in the base register and then uh, within the confines of the base plus the limit or the bounds register. So everything, every logical section of the process will be placed within the memory area. Now, the problem with that is fragmentation because if you, if you allocate uh, a, a, a certain amount of the memory for a for a process like 64 KB for the entire process. It's possible that some areas within the 64 KB limit will be unused. So another approach would be why don't we just uh, separate the logical uh, code sections into uh, segments. What we mean by that is originally for a process we only have uh, one base register and limits register pair. 
But in the case of segmentation, what we want is for every logical section of a program or a process, a different pair of base register and limit register will be provided. So in that way, even though a process sees the, the virtual address space as contiguous memory, in the physical memory, it is possible that the different uh, sections of the process are not contiguous. So that's the essence of segmentation. So uh, what what you did there, what we did there is to separate okay, separate uh, each section into variable uh, chunks based on the logical sections of a program. Now, in this chapter, we're going to look into paging. Okay, uh, paging, what it does is to split up the other space into fixed size unit called a page. So in segmentation, uh, the different chunks can have different sizes. That means the code, code section can, uh, let's say, can be 1 KB, the stack can be 2 KB, the heap can be 3 KB. And that is associated with the logical section of a process. Now, in paging, you don't care about the logical sections of the process. What you do here is to simply divide the virtual address space of the process into fixed size chunks called page. And uh, you don't care much about whether what is what the contents of the page is. It doesn't matter whether it is code, data, or stack. It doesn't matter in paging. Okay? And in addition to that, uh, the work so the virtual address space of the process is divided into pages. Then the actual or the physical memory is also divided into uh, chunks of the same size as the page size and we refer to them as frames. So, so again, the two important things to consider here is that the virtual address space of a process contiguous is divided into pages and the physical memory is divided into frames which need not be contiguous. Okay, so that's the idea. And so, if you have a page and a frame, there should be a translation from uh, the page, which is which uses the virtual address space, to the corresponding frame number. And the translate the information needed to translate the the virtual address to the physical address is called the page table, which is nothing more than a hash table in terms of the data structure. So the advantage of paging are the following. The first one is flexibility. Uh, it's suppo uh, supporting the abstraction of address space effectively. You don't need assumption on how the heap and how the stack grow and are used. So I mentioned a while ago that in paging you don't care what, what you place in the, in the page. Okay, and how to uh, manipulate it. Unlike in segmentation, for example, uh, if, you, if you're looking into the stack, since the stack grows downward, okay, so you have to implement a different mechanism when doing some translations. Okay? So the second advantage of paging is uh, the ease of uh, free space management. So. Uh, since you have fixed sizes, okay, uh, so there and the page sizes, uh, the page size is the same as the frame size. Then it's basically easy to maintain a list of free pages, used pages, free frames, and uh, used frames. So since you can just have let's say a stack of uh, uh, these pages or a stack of these frames. So it's quite easy to manage these uh, chunks of memory given that they are of fixed size and the, the page size and the frame size are 
the same. So here we have an example uh, paging scheme. Okay. Uh, in this uh, paging scheme that we have here is uh, we have a 128 byte physical memory with 16 bytes per uh, 16 bytes page frame. So this is the physical memory, 128 bytes, and uh, we have uh, the virtual address, virtual memory. In this example, we have uh, 64 byte address space. So let's say that this is the address space uh, for the virtual uh, memory. So. One thing to note in this illustration is first, the size of the page and the frame, uh, they are the same, so six, uh, 16 bytes. Okay. And in the virtual memory, uh, the pages appear contiguous, but in the physical memory, they need not be contiguous. For example, page zero here is placed in the frame uh, three here. Okay, so it's page zero of uh, the address space, and frame one is placed in page uh, frame frame seven, located uh, starting offset one one two in the physical memory. So. What happens here that every memory reference using the virtual address space will be converted to the corresponding uh, physical address in the physical memory. Now, again, the information to translate page to frame is in the page table. So let's see how address translation works. So uh, in order to perform the translation, the virtual address is divided into two parts. You have the virtual page number or just the page number and the offset within the page. Okay? So in this illustration, how many bits for our virtual address? So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, we have here 64 bytes, so uh, it's enough to, uh, it's enough for us to be able, it's enough for us to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, bit, uh, six bits, sorry, 6 bits to represent the virtual address space. Now, if we divide the, the virtual address space into 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 pages, then uh, we need two bits to represent the virtual page number. So this will be page 00, page uh, 01, page uh, 10, and page 11. So these are the decimal representation that I was mentioning the uh, bit representation. Uh, page 01, page, uh, uh, page 00, page 01, page 10, and page 11. And then within that page, you get the offset, right? So we have here an example. So you have, if you are given a, a reference to a memory location at virtual address 21, then in binary representation, this will be the, uh, this will be the values for that, for 21, right? And then the first two bits will represent the, virtual page number and then the, this one the remaining four bits will represent the offset within the page within the page so 21 so 0 1 so 0 0 0 1 uh, 0 1 1 so this is 0 1 so 16 is with uh, 21 is within the range of uh, 16 to uh, 32 so uh, this will be the uh, interpretation of the virtual address when we divide it into the virtual page number and the offset. And in order to translate that, so again, we have to translate the virtual address to a 
uh, physical address. So our 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 physical memory is uh, of size 128 bytes. So we will be needing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bits to be, to represent that uh, to represent all the locations in, in the physical memory and. Uh, the address translation will uh, happen here such that the virtual page number will be converted to the physical number. So as shown here, uh, so this is page 01 in the virtual address space and based on the mapping it is in uh, uh, page 1 here so it is page uh, 7, uh, frame, frame 7. So this will be the page one of the address space. So you can see that 01 is mapped to 111, which is actually the frame seven, which represents the frame seven. And this, the offset from the virtual address is the same as the offset within the frame. Okay, so this is the offset within the page. This is the offset within the frame, the same. The main difference is the look uh, the page number here, which is page number zero one, and the frame number, frame seven, which is reflected in this uh, uh, in this diagram, in this figure. Okay. So, given that, the next question to us is okay. So, uh, when uh, in in paging, when paging is enabled. Uh, every memory access that is specified a given a virtual address will be translated into a physical address by converting the virtual page number to a frame number and then using the offset within the, the frame. Now, the next question is, so somehow you need to have some mapping. You have to store the information of the mapping of the page number to the frame number. So where do you store that? Right. So normally you can store that in the uh, memory managed by the kernel. Can the, kernel the, the operating system can maintain this data structure. However, the page table can get awfully large. Right. So you can think of, of the page table as a hash table. The first column represents the page number, the second column represents the corresponding frame number. And every memory reference, uh, that page table will be consulted. Okay. As an illustration, if you have a 32-bit address space, which is virtual address space, with uh, four kilobyte pages, okay, so four kilobyte pages, so that means that you will need uh, 12 bits to represent the uh, uh, 12 bits to represent the 4 KB. That's the size of the page, and then the remaining bits will represent the virtual page number. And uh, if you have 2 to the 20, that will require uh, uh, so you'll have. 2 to the 20 possible entries in the first column if you have uh, a 32 bit address space and then you multiply that with 4 bytes per page table entry so that will take about 4 megabytes of memory which is quite uh, large okay and normally there should be uh, the page table is a, there is a, a unique page table associated per process if you have if you have a lot of processes and each process will require 4 MB of uh, memory to maintain the page table for that process then it can actually be very large so if you, say one, you have 100 processes and then each of those 100 processes will require 4 megabytes for that just for the entry of the page table so you will have 400 MB RAM to store the page table for each of the for each of the processes right so there should be a mechanism to minimize the this storage area right 
So, so as you can see here, it's an illustration. Uh, you have the kernel maintaining the page ta table in the first, is the physical memory. So the kernel maintains the page table within this, uh, within the frame zero. So, so you have three, seven, five, two. Okay. So you have three, uh, seven, five, uh, two. All is stored in this uh, memory. Okay. So this is just one way to store the page table. So. As shown here, uh, we need to store information in the page table. So the minimum information that we can store in the page table, uh, the first column would be the, uh, the page number, the second column will be the frame number. Right? So, what is in the page table? The page table is just a data structure that is used to map the virtual address to the physical address. As I mentioned it a while ago. And one way to represent that is to uh, use a linear page tables and array. So uh, I was mentioning the first column will be the index to the page table. And then uh, what is contained in the page table is the frame number and just the minimum information. So it's just an array of, of integers where in the index represents the page number and the actual content of the array is the frame number. And the OSS indexes the array by the virtual page number and looks, looks up the page table entry. So, Essential here is the value on the page table entry. So, in addition to the in addition to the frame number, there are also other information that is stored for each entry in the page table. And normally, they are just a collection of bits, a few number of bits. So, for example, you can uh, in in a page table entry can have a valid bit. Okay? Now the valid bit will indicate whether the particular translation is valid because sometimes it's possible that uh, that, trans uh, trans that entry is no longer uh, valid. The second bit is called the protection bit. Protection bit, uh, it indicates whether the page could be uh, read from, written to, or executed from. So this is similar to the segment descriptor table. Okay, so in the seg segment descriptors in segmentation, next like for example, you have protection bits to specify uh, what can be done in that particular segment. Now here, uh, this protection bit indicates what can be done to the data or to the memory area. Could, uh, could it be read, written, uh, written to, or executed from? Then the next one is the present bit, which indicates whether this page is in physical or on the disk. So later we're going to talk about uh, demand paging, uh, wherein the idea here, the idea in demand paging is if the memory is full, for example, you can move data from the memory to the secondary storage and the present bit indicates whether the page you are accessing you are referencing is in the memory or it's still stored on uh, the secondary storage or say a swap space then we have the dirty bit which indicates whether the page has been modified since it was brought into memory so sometimes uh, to speed up things especially if you have uh, page replacement algorithms in demand paging, uh, sometimes you don't want to save uh, pages that are not that were not modified because that will only consume IO cycle. So this bit in the page table entry will indicate whether the page is has been modified or not. Okay? And then you have uh, reference bit uh, which actually determines whether uh, when somehow when the page was last accessed because later we're going to talk about different page replacement algorithms so this bit will 
determine whether uh, that that page should be replaced. Right. So here's an example of a page table entry in the x86. So remember, the x86 is a CISC processor. It's a complex instruction set computer, and it has variable length uh, instructions. And it also supports both segmentation and paging. So in the lab, you, you are able to try out how segmentation works in x86. In the future, in future labs, we're going, to, we're going to look into or observe how paging is used in the x86. But here's an example of a page table entry for the x86, 386 basically. So this is the frame number. As I, was, as I was mentioning a while ago, if you have a linear page table, the index represents the page number, and then the value within that array is the information about the, the page. So, of course, you have need to have the, the basic entry, which is the uh, frame number shown here. So, this is represented in starting with bit 12 up to bit 31. So, this is 32 bits. And then you have here the different information as I was mentioning, ago, normally these are just bit fields within this 32-bit 32 uh, 32 entry in the page table. Okay? So I hope that is clear. So if you can think of uh, the page table entry, uh, it describes what uh, the mapping, okay? It describes the characteristics of the, of, the, of, the pray, of the frame or the page, basically. Okay? So these are the... Uh, the the location of the different uh, fields. Now another issue with paging is it is slow. Why? Why is it slow? Because uh, you will need uh, two memory accesses in order to perform the translation. The first part where will be to look up the page table entry and from the page table entry is the actual uh, uh, fetching of the actual data or referencing the physical memory. So it's quite slow. Right? So normally you have to specify the start of the page table. So again, the page table is also located in the memory. And uh, for every memory reference, paging requires the OS to perform one extra memory reference. So that was, that was what I was saying. So. During the boot up process of the hardware, you need to set up the page table, or actually when you create a process, as, as we said, uh, page there should be a page table for each process. And that process, uh, that uh, page table okay, will be used, so, kumbaga, unique, uh, the, the page table is unique for each process. But again, you will still need uh, memory reference to access the page table. Right? So let's look at the pseudocode on how to eventually access the actual memory contents uh, if you are using paging. So as you can see here, uh, we have the virtual address. So our main input is the virtual address. So what we want to do is from the virtual address, we need to get the page table entry that describes the frame uh, for the particular page number, for that particular page. So we have the virtual address, uh, virtual address here as input, and then we mask, we use a mask to extract the which part of uh, the virtual address represents the page number. So in the case of uh, the pre previous example. So uh, let's look at the first example. So, so we have here 21 as the virtual address. So this is the, the virtual address. So the mask that we're going to use will be uh, uh, this uh, will be one one zero 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 zero. That will be the mask that we're going to use in order to extract this page number. So that will be 
1-1-0-0-0-0 to be able to access this. And then, as shown in the sudo code, you have to shift the, we have to shift those, uh, the, the byte or uh, the address to the right. So how many shifts are we going to do for this translation? So first, end, a bitwise end, one, one, zero, 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 zero. Then we shift to the right four bits. Right? One, two, three, four, to be able to extract this. And that will be our, that will be our virtual page number, okay? And then, from the address of the page table entry, we can now look up the page table entry. So, uh, we can obtain the page table, the address of the page table entry for this uh, virtual page number using this form, this access. So, PTBR is a pointer to the, is a, it points to the start of the page table, and then, uh, we use the page number extracted multiplied by the size of the page table entry then we're going to get the page table entry address for this, part, for this particular page that we are interested to translate okay is that clear and then uh, once you have the page table entry address you can now extract the page the actual page table entry and this one access memory and this is the address so this will return the actual entry from the physical memory so uh, this function here accesses the physical memory and it will return the entry uh, to be referenced by PTE okay so the next step so you now have here access to the page table entry so this will be you will now have access to this uh, to this word here 32-bit uh, information okay? so the next thing thing to do is to check whether the page table entry is valid so you have if PTE that valid equals, equals false you have to uh, raise an exception let's say it's segmentation fault that is not a valid page so where is the valid page here in the case of uh, there is no valid page here so I think uh, I think it's the present bit, right? So it's the present bit that represents whether the the page is is valid in the x86. So if the page is not valid, then segmentation fault. Else, if can access PTE that protection bits equals false, then you also uh, raise an exception, right? Protection fault. You are not allowed to access that page probably for example that page is owned by another process so as you can see here you have the protection bits rw so this one here will represent whether that particular process or doing the access will will has permission to access that page else meaning all the checks have have been passed okay okay so we get the offset so to get the offset you have you are given the virtual address and you bitwise end it to the offset mask so in the given example our offset mask will be 001111 to be able to extract this offset okay so for the offset mask it will be 001111 to be able to extract this offset we won't need to uh, we won't need to shift right because we already we already extracted the actual offset and then the physical address will just be the frame number okay so where did we get the frame number okay. the physical uh, the physical uh, the frame number where did we get that we got we got this from the field in the page table entry so remember this is the uh, frame number from the page table entry so we, are, we will be able to extract this field and uh, so we shift that to the to the left with the PFN shift okay? and then we or that with the offset to get the physical address for the actual data and then 
we place whatever in the memory using promise physical address and place it in the register. So you get the idea on how paging works, how the translation or how memory is accessed when you have paging. So uh, here's an example of uh, the, uh, the performance or character.